Hello everybody, Peter Smith here again with Aged Awareness show number six. The following is a short extract from Dwayne Hepner's book Rebazar Tars and the Golden Guides, book seven, section Dimensional World War Three, from his amazing romantic adventures series. While on the etheric or fifth level, Duane and his companions were being advised by an unknown golden guide who had appeared to them. What is taking place are the different stages all souls must go through until they become aware enough to decide to take their own journey to real freedom. Of course, they must first go through all the other steps and stages before they are ready to take on the biggest and hardest journey of all. From time to time there has to be a shift in from the comfortable positions to those of chaos and discord, and if this does not arouse the individual to seek out the real guides, then those souls must face the future as it unfolds. Life is far too big to just step into and then realise all that it is. So it always takes millions of lifetimes for one to procure themselves into making this monumental decision. And even then, most will only be able to possibly reach the top of the psych realms as they will have been so overly conditioned with the God idea of worship and lawful obedience. Biblical prophecy plays a part in all of this as it too is part of this deceitful plan Tradition involves the creation of others, as most people follow what someone else has created. Yet tradition actually becomes old and dead after a certain time, even though it seems to still have a life of its own. Paul Twitchell was given the rod of power from Reba's Artars, and he decided his creation for mankind. As the responsibility was passed on, each successor was to provide their own uniqueness and expand upon the real position. Instead, the two before Duane in the physical went the way of their vain egos, as this has become a tradition with basically most of the religious and spiritual systems. It is true there are many people who have good intentions, but they do not have real experience, and the real education it takes to make the real connection to the all is. Most spiritual paths lie heavily on old tradition and the old gods and saviours, as Paul's original creation now does, and so does Durwood's creation when he and Gerald legally departed from each other. Duane has put together the real adventure without the followers and membership of traditional heritage. His real position is to equally work with others, those who have the real courage to be the being of light they already are. The real position is open to everyone who wants to stand with the new wave is, the rod of power now. The real position for all of us is to be the real light, like the sun that shines. Thereby we automatically are one with all life and we do not have to interfere with anything. We can now choose what our life is, as we are now everything and no longer chasing the little illusionary parts. Each person must decide their real journey. They must decide to let go of all the things that do not exist with the pure reality. This is why some only reach a certain level in life as they still cling to things like gods and worship and their old relationships. Everything in life is always present and each person decides their life and position so there does not have to be a lot of concern about what the next person is choosing as they have the right to go any direction that they want to. The events that are forecast for the future of the Earth are from past causes and also from the alienoids who want to keep the masses in a locked in fear. It does take a lot for any Uton to escape the clutches of the Kaluam God, but if one does not decide to do so, then pursue the best course to take, then they can only be left with themselves. There are two fundamental ways to view human history. One is known as the catastrophic or accidental view of history, which the dark brats like to promote as an answer for so much of the destruction they cause.
The other idea is the conspiratorial view of what humans have come to know as their history. In the accidental catastrophic view, humans are led to believe that historical events such as wars and revolutions were the direct result of some sudden or surprising event, such as mismanagement, the weather, and the best one of all, God did it, which is known as an act of God with most insurance policies. While the catastrophic view can be more accurate for weather, volcanoes and earthquakes, that is, if they were not created by harp and nuclear devices, it does not always provide a realistic view of humanity and events influenced by man or the gods of man and the weather spirits. The invented idea of belief can be a powerful thing in the psych realms as it is the same category as positive thinking which can be a temporary benefit like a band-aid but can also become a curse because the masses do not understand or respect the reality of cause and effect of the dualistic forces. It is so that the gods of men do rule the ideals of prayer as a petition to them because they want people to worship and grovel to them. This keeps their little unaware souls in bondage for many lifetimes of being slaves in many different embodiments. None of this is by chance, even though little minds like to think it is. Young malleable Americans and other minds are mostly taught the accidental view of human history in the governmental controlled school systems. This view is reinforced throughout their lives by the elitist controlled mass media. As a result, when most discover the conspiratorial view, the immediate reaction is shock, disbelief and a refusal to accept something other than what they have been taught to believe. It is not hard to see how the dark brats have implemented the ideas of belief, hope and faith into the minds and hearts of most people. Belief, hope and faith do have their places, as do diapers on a child, but at some point when the individual has developed their courage, they can then move far past the little ideas of traditional beliefs, which have been a conditioned superstition of control and obedience. But in the shadows lurks the hidden fear placed by the subliminal rats, like the unseen viruses in one's computer. This then becomes a huge baggage for a person to carry around, like a monkey on one's back they cannot see as they are moving forward with their life. There are huge amounts of deception taking place and it is all being streamlined to direct as many people as possible into a complete unconsciousness for many more lifetimes. All things are governed by free will and not the gods in the clouds above. The spiritualists are looking for an awakening with December 2012, just as so many were wondering about the situation with Y2K. It is not that something will not occur, but the saviour idea is a real long shot. Conspiratorial history studies the creative product of man's planning, with conspiratorial history as one researches the actual events, such as wars and revolutions, they soon discover these things are the result of planned events. While the conspiratorial view is not always accurate, for weather, volcanoes and earthquakes again, unless harp and other devices are involved, it is a realistic and accurate view of the interrelationship of man and the many nations on earth. Since the planning for most of these events was done in secret, we use the term conspiratorial history. This is to say that some of human history is the result of plans constructed in secret, which is usually a conspiracy. This then becomes the new order of things according to those who want their way with what others are providing. Paul said that religion was a good business for the earth, as, it, as is quite evident, and so it is that whoever first starts printing the money, they then rule and can more than afford to pay others for whatever they want. To make sure others do not do the same thing, they create situations to keep people in debt and dumbed down with toxic water and food, plus their own created legal system to bind and imprison the disobedient. End of quotation. What is blazingly apparent now is that the earth in its present form and with its present human and animal population is in terminal decline. What is perhaps not so apparent to the vast majority of its occupants is that this has been planned for eons by a self-appointed elite for their own twisted ends of world domination. 
a world people ultimately by drone slaves whose sole function is to serve the elite and keep them in the lofty heights of comfort to which they think they are entitled. What they have failed to take on board, however, is that they are not immortal and they are piling up some pretty horrendous karma for what they are and for a long time have been doing. This plus the fact it is evidently the case that the whole galaxy and probably the whole so-called known universe is in the death throes of the end of an epoch. When this concludes, everything is destined to disappear, to ultimately start anew in due course, in an ever-repeated cycle that characterises the very nature of everything that ever has been, is and ever will be. It is not for no reason that Kevin was guided to open and close these later essays with music from Wagner's Goethe Demerung, Twilight of the Gods, the final part of his mighty ring cycle, which ends with a mythological cataclysm that aptly describes exactly the above. We have no idea exactly when the epoch will end, but once it has happened, all those who have not already made it to the real universes, it would seem, are destined to start again on a new physical world, in a new physical universe, to go through countless more tedious or horrendous lifetimes before they are back to the same level they are at present. Back to go and do not collect 200 quid. In the meantime, while the present physical universe still exists, life on this planet will be a seemingly endless hell, probably in a metal body that lasts considerably longer than our present flesh and blood ones and gives considerably less chance for attaining awareness before it's too late. Therefore we need to get our act together and get out of this rapidly deteriorating hellhole as soon as we can. So how do we do it? A steadily dwindling number of people, certainly in the West, still seem to believe salvation will be theirs if they blindly follow some form of organised religion. Sadly, they are suffering under a serious delusion, if this is the case. I've dealt with what I think of the Christian religion in an earlier essay, and have no wish to repeat myself here, save to point out once again that, an, that all old religions nowadays are a travesty of their original selves, and even going back to their origins, we were never told anything like the full story, if their founders even knew it. Even in more recent times, Dwayne's predecessors, those that came after Paul Twishell, proved to be unaware enough to be swayed away from the real truth by ego trips and other all-too-human failings. Paul himself laid firm foundations for Dwayne to eventually come on the scene backed by the real Universal Guides and pick up the pieces left by those that came in between. Dwayne put his own stamp on things by doing away with old-style membership and followers and any obviously worn-out religious trappings such as praying and deference to a god. This is not to say anything against Paul, who was to some extent having to hone his presentations to suit the times, times that have changed somewhat since and enabled Dwayne more freedom of expression. Dwayne, in his turn, has perfected the way to give his presentations, and this comes across very well in his pleasant and jocular manner when I have had the opportunity to talk to him on Kevin's Skypes. There is no pretentiousness about him, and he never talks down to you, let alone has any obvious aspirations to be some form of cult leader. In fact, that is the last thing he is. Thanks to Dwayne's wonderful books and other work, we are being given the chance to see the light and make our own way back home, back to the source of everything, or the all is, as Dwayne calls it, and total freedom. Freedom of any kind is not what the aforementioned elite have planned for us. This so-called elite has been given many names, the Illuminati, the Cabal, the Chosen Ones, and by me at any rate, several other mainly unprincipled names. They are basically from carefully preserved chosen bloodlines to be found in the crowned heads of Europe, the presidential families of the USA, and many others from the highest levels of society and money. They themselves are ultimately answerable 
to dark beings, aliens that infested the earth eons ago and spend most of their time in another dimension as until the atmosphere on earth is totally altered they cannot normally survive here for very long. Hence they are doing everything they can to alter the air we breathe to suit them and get rid of all organic life here eventually. They want to decimate the human race first, reducing it to a more manageable number. What is their idea of a more manageable number? The figure of 500 million or half a billion, that is some one fourteenth of the present population of the earth, or of at least the seven billion we are told it is, is literally set in stone. In Elbert County, Georgia in the USA, a strange collection of vertical stone slabs appeared in 1980, mysteriously apparently ordered by someone calling himself R.C. Christian, who subsequently disappeared. The slabs are covered in sentences in a number of different languages, basically spelling out a kind of blueprint for a desired new world. Most chillingly, and most controversially, one such sentence seems to be a death sentence for the larger part of the human race, as it calls for the population to be maintained at under 500 million. If we look back over recent years, it is striking how many so-called natural disasters have occurred all over the world and seem to be increasing at an alarming rate. Almost every week we hear now of some catastrophe somewhere in the world, whether it be earthquake, volcano, landslide, hurricane, you name it, with the inevitable loss of life or livable conditions which can amount to the same thing. These however can seem small fry to other disasters clearly planned, such as laboratory manufactured epidemics. We have seen several attempts to get these going over the last few years, HIV, SARS, avian flu, etc most of which have been a failure at getting out of control. However, going back to the so-called Spanish flu, they believe now it neither came from Spain nor was it in fact flu, of 1918 took out 50 million people, far more than World War I had done, and nobody knows where it came from or why it stopped. Similarly, the Black Death appeared suddenly in medieval times and equally suddenly disappeared in two waves in Europe separated by two centuries, it has now been proven it was not bubonic plague, nor was it spread by the fleas on black rats, as was always said. It has been shown there were no black rats in the worst hit parts of England, for example. Quite simply, no one knows what it was, or what caused it, to come and go so suddenly, twice. 